everyone. I'm Selena Hill, the digital editor at Black Enterprise. And today I'm super excited to speak with comedian and Hollywood writer, Chris Spencer, who is the co-creator and executive producer of the BET and Netflix original series, Real Husbands of Hollywood. And he is also the head writer for countless award shows. And he wrote and executive produced Grownish. Hey, Chris, I'm super happy to have you today. What's happening, Selena, now? <laughs> uh, well, so how are you doing? How's everything? I'm hanging, you know, I got, my office is back in the back, in the back of the house. And so the basketball court is right there. So my kids keep coming in and out of what I thought was my office, which is, I guess it's also the equipment room. So uh, excuse my language and, and volatility that just happened a minute ago, but it actually wasn't her fault. The sprinklers came on and started wetting up the cord and she wanted to come in there and turn up the cord. And my daughter is uh, in love with basketball. And so uh, I, I know how she feels because she's in school right now. They have, school, in, they have uh, school online. So they have these little breaks where they can actually get to play basketball. And so this little break was about to have a wet court and that's why she kind of came in. So I'm gonna have to apologize to her because I gave her a verbal lashing. <laughs> it's all good. I mean, this is a frustrating time for all of us. Are you also yeah. homeschooling them? Well, there's no school. So yeah, they're being homeschooled online. So our six, seven, eight hours a day, just like they're in school, they're on online talking to their teachers. And there's a, you know, you can see in the square, there's like a Zoom room and they're, they're on Zoom and they'll see their classmates and they're in class. <laughs> All right. So what's one thing that you can't wait to do if and when we ever get back to real life? So if you were to ask this question to Butch, what would his answer be? To Butch? I don't know. What would it be? It would be golf. Oh. You know, I come out there for golf every year and, and I know he's dying and I'm dying because, well, you know what? Is he, he's in New Rochelle. He's in New Rochelle. He's definitely playing a golf, right? He's in New Rochelle. He's in New York somewhere, whatever. I'm in LA and Ventura That's County far. and Orange yeah. County, which were about 40 minutes away from me, either direction. Uh, those places are open, but the courses that I normally play, which are in 15, 20 minutes away, are closed. So, uh, I could be playing, but I, I want to go play at my course first. You know what I mean? Did you try maybe like a virtual game or something that's like that? That's not golf, lady. It's not golf. Well, I mean, if that's the worst of your worries, that's the worst. It sounds of my worries. like you're doing pretty well. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. I cannot complain. Um, okay, so I also wanted to ask, like, how are you making the best of in of being indoors? It seems like your creative juices and content is just like pumping out and just flowing yeah. right now um i actually you know before covid19 hit i actually had projects that i was working on so what this did is made me have to sit my ass down and complete them so i'm not as angry as many of <laughs> as many as my many of my comedian friends who actually make a living going on the road every week they're on a plane or they're in a comedy club and then they're in a theater or they're on a, a cruise ship and so I, you know, I feel for those that are suffering and um, uh, I, I just have to, you know, be extra excited or feel extra fortunate that I'm able to actually uh, pay, my, pay my mortgage by working from indoors. That's good. Okay, so let's talk about the laugh. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the laugh experience. How does it feel yeah. to participate in the first ever virtual reality comedy special it's, it's not just a special it's a network and so on this platform you're gonna have dio hughley right i mean the list of comedians is, is 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 growing every day and so now you're gonna see all these people who you know you know love and adore with their own channels on this network so imagine this was warner brothers and then now there's all these studios with your favorite comedians creating content and some things can be seen uh, just like are we looking at each other right now, two dimensional, but then others are in VR, which gives you the ability to be like, you have these, this headset and it's like, you'll be, on, you'll be watching Nas on stage and then you look to your left, you can see the audience, the audience behind you, you can look up like this, you can see the balcony. It's, it's, 
it's some futuristic stuff. It's it's I'm very excited to be a part of it. Part of it. It sounds really dope. How did you get involved? Um, a guy named Harry Hall, uh, who I've known for about 25 years. He's been working with DL forever, and um, uh, he he approached me in Washington D.C. Where I was performing at um. Uh, Joe Claire's show, very funny comedian as well, who probably should have a channel on this network. And he was like, yo, we got something hot and we want you to be a part of it. And I was like, show me the money. I mean, yes, I would love to. <laughs> oh, so, okay, so are you going to have your own channel as well? Yes, I'm going to have my own channel as well. Yeah, of course. So what type of virtual reality content can we expect from you? Well, what I'm going to do, um, the first, before I do my VR things, uh, I'm going to do a show called Still Standing, right? And you're going to get a chance to see all those comedians you grew up with and they're wondering, what are they, what are they doing now? How come I haven't seen them on TV or movies? Well, what you'll find out is since there's 250 channels, some of them are still on TV. You just don't know where they are. So the Adele Gibbons of the world, the George Wallace's, the Bruce Bruce's, and SJ, uh, all these, Alex Thomas, Pierre, uh, Tony Woods, all these incredible, funny comedians, and you're like, damn, what are they doing now? Or where can I find them? I want, I want to create a show where I do these one-on-one -on -one interviews with these people so uh, we can know what's going on in their lives. You know, some of them are doing other things besides doing stand-up and creating text. Has a luxury line, you know, and, and, and uh, luxury uh, um, totes and, and backpacks. And some of us have become writers, you know what I mean? Some of us are heavy into the stock market like a Daryl Heath. So um, I want to be able to bring that out and let people know what the hell and where the hell these people are and what they're doing. So you're going to have like a talk show. That's dope. Yeah, maybe I should have said that and then I could have saved all those words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's super cool. Okay, so... Um, have, do you plan to participate in more VR experiences beyond this? And, Absolutely. And is this your, because, okay. Yeah, this is my first phase will be, uh, you know, another talk show where I'm going to talk to all these, uh, social media influencers and, and, and just pick their brain and have them pick my brain and maybe have another vet on so they can actually talk because, uh, a lot of them, uh, think we don't like them and think we think they don't like us as stand up. So I want to put them in a room together and let's have some conversations how we can help you because your stand-up sucks and how you can help us because our social media sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, I want to start doing concerts and introducing to the world some of the greatest comedians you've ever seen in your life. And that's where these VR headsets, at least on my channel, will come into effect. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and I know a lot, a lot of very talented people that do not have uh, a platform to showcase their works and uh, seek.com, C-E-E-K.com is going to do just that. Yeah, so seek.com, it was actually first invented in 2015. And it seems like now is the time where everyone is really trying to like take advantage of it. I mean, these platforms yeah. and virtual reality, they always existed. Why do, I mean, why do you think people weren't really paying attention before? I don't think there was a big marketing push. Um, and I think other people were into it, other cultures. I think now we, and you know, when we put our, when we get into it, we're going to take it to another level. So now it's time for us as a culture to take it to another level. And the thing that the things that Mary over at uh, Secret and, and Harry Hall and Patricia, Patrice, Patricia Johnson are doing, uh, you watch what we finna do. Oh, I am looking forward to it. So when does the premiere, the last experience? The laugh experience, May 15th. May 15th, 9 p.m. Eastern. Definitely looking yes. forward to that. So, like, when it comes to the laugh experience and, like, some of the, the jokes, do you think that it's okay to joke about the pandemic? Do you think that, like, comedy has a, a license to just make jokes about any and everything, or is it too soon? So, in, in the rule of comedy is tragedy plus time equals comedy, right? And you have to have taste. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just be saying, you know, my, your, your auntie died or, you know, why you, you know, it, it's got to be done with class. There's got to be some funny things. It's got to be, I mean, look at all the memes and, and gifts that are out there. People, 
buying up all the toilet paper and then the Jamaican dude out there beating people with a stick because they don't have on their masks. Like all that stuff is funny. And yes, I think if done right, most things in the world that happen, whether tragic, tragic or not, uh, you can make fun and make light of. Because we as a culture have always done that. In slavery, you know, mama jokes were born. So uh, we know Is how that to take true? it. And like I said, Is tragedy. Factual? <laughs> Is that where mama no, jokes came? Okay. <laughs> no, no. No, but, but you, there's, there's definitely, there's, no, 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 there, but there's definite, uh, you know, I've heard that. There's definite evidence of comedy happening during slavery. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these stories that are told over the years come from that. Like, here's, here's an example. So in some of these, this is how racist these people are. In some of these towns, they would have a barrel of water in the middle of the town, right? because slaves weren't allowed to have fun or be seen laughing. So when they felt compelled to laugh, they had to put their head in the barrel of water and laugh underwater. Now that is true. Wow. Yeah, that, that's really, really interesting. It's just, I mean, it speaks to our resilience and how, like you said, we've always been creative. We've always had a way to get always around, been- even when it wasn't, you know, it was against the law to laugh, to get married, right. to read, but we've always found a way to remain, you know, educated, informed, and empowered. So that, that's really telling. Um, thank you for sharing that. What makes you laugh Absolutely. nowadays? My family, my kids, my wife is hysterical. Um, a lot of things make me laugh. A lot, you know, there's, there's so much great television out there that, that makes me laugh. Uh, now that I'm in quarantine, I can also always, I can, I can look back at those comedy specials that always, you know, made me laugh as a kid, like, you know, Richard Pryor live on Sunset Strip or Richard Pryor live, uh, from uh, live in concert or Eddie Murphy Delirious, all of Kevin Hart's things, all of Chris Rock's specials, all of Dave Chappelle's special. My, my friend David Arnold just came out with a special called Fat Ballerina. That's, a, that's brilliant. Dion Cole has a special, Wanda Sykes, Tiffany. I mean, all I'm doing is staying home and watching TV, lady. I, I, I'm laughing all day because I'm sad. I can't play it all. <laughs> no, okay, right. So it seems like you're definitely staying busy, uh, you know, consuming all of that content. As a writer and, and a TV veteran, just someone who has, like, you have an expansive career in Hollywood, what is the direction that you would foresee media, TV, film going in? The direction in terms of because of what happened now or just yeah serious? yeah like the industry itself and how do you think it, what role do you think technology will play in that i mean technology technology is it you know what i mean i remember five or six years ago i saw this kid in the airport watching a tv show on his phone i was like <laughs> i'll never do that and now i'm Pretty soon they're gonna have stuff, you know. Oh, dude, what are you doing? I'm watching a movie on my thumb. It's crazy. <laughs> so, um, it's always advancing. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I, technology is at the forefront of entertainment. So, you know, if you don't have next te- Netflix right now, you know what I mean? If you don't have Apple TV, you know, you're missing out on a lot of things that you know that technology is is brought to the forefront. And so uh, I'm just trying to make sure I'm hip. And I I have young kids that let me know when I'm doing stuff that's old. (laughs) So we had to get rid of the the big booty TV. No, I didn't have one of those. Uh, But um, technology is it. I mean, there's things out now, Quibi, which is called Quick Bites, which is now they're having stuff done in 10 minute form. Kevin Hart just did this thing called Die Hard, like Die Hard, and he did an action movie, but every, it's, a, it's a TV show, 10-minute TV shows, 10-minute sequences, 10 of them strung together to create this movie, this movie TV show, whatever you want to call it. And so things are ever, ever changing. They really are. And I'm happy to see you're sort of at the forefront of it now that you're doing the lap experience in the virtual reality series. Uh, it Absolutely. seems like, you know, you're definitely getting ahead of that curve. 
Um, so what else are you working on? And do you think that you would ever want to write for Quibi or anything like that? Absolutely. Of course. I want to be wherever, wherever the hot stuff is and people are talking and people are going to, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm writing a Real Husbands of Hollywood movie. Oh, that's going to uh, be amazing. Yeah. Uh, I have another deal with NBC. I have a project over there. I have another one at Universal. Um, I'm busy. <laughs> even, even if I could play golf, I probably shouldn't be playing golf. Gotcha. So would you say during the, the even though the pandemic has disrupted a lot of industries, it sounds like for you, the work just kept coming. Yeah, I think. Knock on wood. Gotcha. Um, so what is one thing that you learned about yourself since you've been sheltered in? I've eaten so much chocolate that now I'm allergic to it. Um, uh, um, doing 25 push-ups <laughs> now and then is not the same as the gym. Um, I have a better jump shot than both of my kids. <laughs> uh, being vegan uh, is not going to get you skinny if you're still eating bread and french fries mm. did you um, those are great points did you make anything retrospective or introspective about yourself that you learned no nope, I'm 52 <laughs> I've always known how wonderful I, I've been forever <laughs> Okay, okay, cool. Um, now, have you noticed any silver linings in this new norm that we've entered? Yeah, my family has gotten much closer. Uh, my wife and I created a TV show while we've been uh, in quarantine. It was on every Wednesday night called Date Night. And we have uh, an interview show with another couple where we have wine and charcuterie and we talk about parenting and uh, uh, marriage and uh, the way of the world and dealing with quarantine life. And uh, we were, we just did our fourth episode last Wednesday, which had Flex and Shani. So it was a very emotional episode. Uh, if you go watch it, just be prepared to see two men cry. Uh, we wow. had Nicole Kojo, we had David and Julie Arnold, and we had Dondre and Sally Whitfield. So it's been, it's, it's been a great ride and uh, we've already got offers, television offers and wow. you know, we're going to wait because we want to get, we want to get great at it. You know what I mean? If I were to talk to any people getting in, in this industry, you know, sometimes you get, you get an offer mm -hmm. and then you get a TV show and then when it's failing, uh, they'll blame you if you're not hot, but if you're hot and the show is failing, they will blame everybody around you. So I'm not gonna race into anything ever again. I've, I've done that quite a few times and been the one to be on the receiving end of the lashings. <laughs> I'm gonna wait till it's, you know, Kevin Hart, Rock, Denzel Washington, Tiffany Haddish hot. <laughs> they'll fire everybody else around me. What are you, like, how are you being intentional about staying hot or relevant? Like what? What is it that you're doing? Uh, I'm 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 a writer, and I'm I'm pretty sought after because, you know, every award show season, uh, I'm blessed from Jesse Collins to write on the BET Awards. So, um, a lot of times you see your favorite black comedian, and they're gonna host an award show, and they're gonna want somebody who knows their voice, and it's funny. I just have to be funny and I'm friends with all of these people. Like these people are my fraternity. So who not better to have right for you than a guy that knows you and knows your voice. So many times uh, these people will have a team surrounded around them with people who know them and I know all of them. So that helps me stay relevant and hip ish. And then, and like I said, I'm here, I'm here writing and creating and just trying to maintain. That's no, it. you're doing a phenomenal job at that. Um, you know, congratulations to you and all your success. Um, do you miss real life or are you like super used to doing these Zoom of interviews and I Instagram? Real life. I'm Zoomed out. <laughs> okay, I don't want to zoom, 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 zoom. Okay, y'all hear what Teddy Riley said. I'm tired of zoom, 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 and, and twitching and blue teething and jeaning and whatever it is. 
I want to see some people. I want to shake some hands, hug some friends, kiss my mama, and play some golf. Are you really going to interact with strangers post-COVID and, like, shake hands and stuff? Because they're saying that the new norm, we may not, we may not greet people like that anymore. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. We're going to never shake anybody's hand. We may, like, bow and, like, change color. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. That's the new norm. Uh, I'm not, so for the rest of my life, <laughs> I'm doing this? I'm not gonna you're not with it. You're not, you're not going to be with it either. No, look, I, I'm not. But that's just what I'm hearing. But I don't want to take up too much more of your time, Chris. So if you would just let everyone know one more time how and where we can watch the Laugh Experience and what you're looking forward to the most about it. Seek.com. That's C-E-E-K.com. Uh, May 15th, we launch uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. PST. And I look forward to seeing what DL has to offer and Ryan Davis and some of the magical things that I'm going to bring uh, to this platform. Uh, I look forward to you seeing it. You're going to love it. For sure. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.